Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, a man gunned down in southwestern New Providence. How the transgender community could be affected by national health insurance. We tour one of the newest resorts on the island. And of course, we check out this week's cutest kids and pets. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. <laughs> Welcome once again to MB12. Emotions ran high in a closely knit Flamingo Gardens community last night after a teen was shot dead in the street on Hyatt Road at around 10 o'clock. Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander said, there's no known motive for this killing. All police know is that a man in a gray colored van pulled up alongside the teen as he was walking on the road and opened fire. <laughs> On checking Highfoot Drive, this is just in the Flamingo Gardens area. They met the lifeless uh, body of a teenager, appeared to be between 15 and 16 years old. He was lifeless, lying in the driveway of a resident in this area. Uh, the only information we have at this time, uh, the deceased was walking along with two other young boys when a vehicle pulled up, a male exited that vehicle and shot uh, the deceased. Relatives of the teen who were on the scene were visibly distraught and at one point began feuding with each other, according to Fernander. <laughs> Father and mother, uh, they're having a field here and we're just trying to quiet them, uh, quiet them down. Uh, but uh, all is well, we're just encouraging them. To, this is the time not to, to fight, but to come together to assist in trying to bring closure uh, to uh, the, their son death. Police say they are working with very little information and are asking anyone who can help solve this matter to come forward. This is a well-knitted area. Uh, we are appealing to members to please come forward with whatever information that could assist in advancing this investigation. This killing marks the 22nd murder for 2016 and is the second teen killed in less than 24 hours. Now the Ministry of Education reacting to that 10th grade honor roll student at Government High School who was struck to the head with a stone that was launched into the number 16 bus she was traveling on to school at around 8 a.m. Friday. Chief Superintendent Clayton Fernander, who's the officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit, said police understand that when the bus was on Lazaretto Road off Carmichael Road, several men began throwing big stones causing damage to the bus and hitting the teenager. According to Fernander, the student was taken to hospital and died at around 3 p.m. Asked about the motive for the incident, Fernander said police believe that the incident stemmed from an altercation on the same bus the day before and that the student was an innocent bystander. Police have taken seven, seven people in for questioning in connection with the incident. However, Fernander could not confirm whether they were involved. He said the bus driver was also cooperating with authorities. In a statement released yesterday afternoon, the Ministry of Education lamented the death of the student, though did not identify her. The statement said the ministry is deeply saddened by this tragic event and calls on all citizens to unite to promote a spirit of peace and love. According to the ministry, administrators of Government High School called an emergency assembly prior to dismissal yesterday. 
to inform students of the unfortunate death of their schoolmate. Counselors will report to the school first thing Monday morning to provide necessary grief counseling for students and staff. While well, shifting gears, Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper says one of the most interesting discussions at a recent medical conference was about people in the transgender community and how they will be treated under the new National Health Insurance Plan. Giorgio Bain has that story. Former Vice President of the Medical Association of the Bahamas, Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper says, as NHI moves forward, he hopes it's made to include everyone, including those transgendered individuals. That was one of the more interesting lectures that we did have at the conference. And uh, we had a physician who um, is a, well, actually he's a, a psychologist who is very well versed in some of the medical issues that people of the LGBT community have. Cooper says he does not see national health insurance covering the surgeries necessary for transgendered individuals to transition, but he hopes as society progresses that eventually it will become a part of the discussion. You know, as society progresses and, and we become more inclusive and more exposed, I'm assuming that there will be people who uh, requesting gender reassignment surgery. Um, currently, I don't know if those expertise are available here, but um, you'll see. I don't think that's something that, that National Health Insurance will cover. Cooper says he is here to care for patients, no matter their sexual persuasion or preference. From the perspective of a physician, I'm here to treat patients, irrespective of your, your gender or your sexual persuasion. If you have a medical problem, people trust me to take care of them and to take care of the problem. So uh, it, it doesn't matter to me, and I think most physicians feel the same way. Cooper says as the discussion progresses, the LGBT community must be included. Reporting for NB12, I'm Giorgio Bain. Well, the primary care phase of national health insurance is slated for introduction in April, but surgeon and former FNM deputy chairman and Senator Dr. Dwayne Sands says he doubts that's going to happen. Sands spoke to our news team at his office earlier this week. He noted there's still a lot of outstanding matters that need to be addressed ahead of NHI's introduction. You can tell me in 20 days or 21 days that you're going to be introducing NHI. You've signed up no doctor. You've signed up no lab. You've signed up no uh, pharmacy. And we can have NHI in 21 days. Devil is a liar. It ain't going to happen. In addition to major stakeholders still having not signed on to the Christie administration scheme, Sands noted the consultation process is ongoing, the legislation has not been passed in Parliament, the regulations are unknown, and enrollment has not begun. So the consultation phase through KPMG conti is continuing. Um, whether that then results in changes to the legislation, whether they it impacts the regulations. You haven't seen any of that yet. The registration process isn't even taking place right now. The draft NHI bill was released last month and stakeholders were reportedly given eight business days to review it and offer suggestions according to Bahamas Insurance Association Chairman Emmanuel Komalafe who criticized the time frame. Sand said although dialogue between NHI officials and stakeholders have improved, he questioned just how seriously government is considering recommendations. If this ongoing dialogue is purely for people to bend up their gum or beat up their gum and is not going to be incorporated into the rollout of NHI, then this is a farcical exercise. And I think Bahamans would want to know why are we spending all this money for this exercise with KPMG if as a consequence of this real dialogue now, it's not going to be included in the product. So I have said publicly that I welcome the dialogue. I am hopeful that it's going to lead to a better product. But implicit in this is if you then say that you're going to roll out NHI anyway and you're not going to take into account any of this discussion, then the government can only be seen to be disingenuous and duplicitous in this approach. And I am hoping that that's not the case. And as for when SANS thinks it's likely NHI will come on stream? Sometime within the third quarter of 2016 might be a reasonable start time. And then it's going to be um, in fits and starts. Um, 
I doubt seriously that any real clinical introduction of national health insurance in the Bahamas will take place in April. Now, there may be something to be called NHI, uh, but whether or not it impacts the quality of care that Bahamians get, I doubt it. While the finishing touches are being put on the Sunset Resort Bahamas that sits on the corner of Bay and Nassau streets just before it's set to become a part of the courtyard at Marriott. Our news team was given a tour this week. Here's Kyle Joaquin with that story. The first stop on our tour was a poolside deluxe room. Yes, this will all be a part of the courtyard and Marriott and this is our phase one that's fully completed. It has 112 rooms right now and all the rooms are king beds. Then it was on to one of the standard deluxe rooms. They go for the same price actually for the locals. We offer it at 200 for our international guests. It's 270 plus taxes. On the fifth floor, looking over the balcony of the room, one has a clear view of the pool and Junkanoo Beach. Right now we'll go into the lounge area and over in the restaurant area that'll be open in about two weeks. The bar is actually open right now for business. So Over at the bar, Clayton whipped up something special for us. I'm going to attempt to make you a sunset resort drink, a signature drink by Sunset Resort. So the drink is called the Sunset Resort, but what happens when it's changed to the Marriott? Uh, well, I love, the, I, love, <laughs> I love to get a signature Marriott drink. In the meantime, I'll give you a Sunset Delight. And after adding a little pineapple rum, coconut, and a few other ingredients as well, we were all set. The owner's representative, Prince Jordan, explains how within a few months, this property will no longer be Sunset Resort Bahamas. Instead, it will be the latest addition to the Courtyard Marriott brand. The hotel has opened as the Sunset Resorts, which is an independent property. Um, within the next couple months, actually June, early June, it will be converted to the Courtyard by Marriott. Um, this is following the acquisition of this property, which was an independent hotel, the Sunset um, Nassau Palm Hotel. The Courtyard at Marriott is one of the most well-established global hotel brands with over a thousand locations worldwide. The renovations to the hotel was carried out by Bahamian contractors and the resort brags of its management team, comprising of all Bahamians. There are about 50 people currently employed. Jordan said by the end of phase two, at the end of the year, and $5 million later, they'll be looking at a staff complement of about 120. In years gone by, this was actually two hotels that was combined into one. So if you notice, there's a, there's a separate pool here and there's a separate pool on the other building. So this building is actually 112 keys, 112 rooms, which is open and operational. And when we open as a married courtyard in June, it will be 112 rooms married courtyard. The other building is 83 rooms and that is about 70% complete. The exterior is complete, but the interior still needs to have some work done. We're Reporting for NB12 Weekend, I'm Kyle Joaquin.